like that. Okay, so we're going to start off with the LNHS library and I'm going to hand over to Julie, our librarian. Okay, there should be another slide with more detail. This one or what do you want? Would you There's like another one as well, but that we can start with this one, but everyone can read that pretty quickly, I imagine. Okay, um, which one do you want to start with? Um, no, that, that was fine. It just went over the opening hours post COVID and how we're trying to get up to speed. And just looking at the past year, there have been about 25 visits to the library. Some of those have been repeat visitors who were doing research, particularly uh, one for an article about birds for his local bird group newsletter. And then there was someone who came a couple of times researching for her PhD, PhD study, which included info about London bomb sites and what flora were growing there. And someone else came in to research spiders and various members came in to research birds and a few people have just been browsing. And then we had a couple of sessions organized by Maria looking at specimens. And while people were there, they looked at particular publications about moths and hoverflies. I don't think there's another slide that's it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Those, yeah. Those, those were, those were uh, some, actually, the, that photo doesn't go with the list of book, books, but um, that was from a previous year, but that's okay. The list of books is accurate. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. It's, and um, you know, obviously, there's people can get in touch with you. If any, if any members would like to come along and visit the library, you've kind of got con there's contact details on the website. So please do kind of consider going along if you've, you've not already visited. As you've seen, there's a lot of you know really lovely new books that have been added this year. So and thank you. Uh, somebody's just popped in. Um, somebody called Addy. Uh, the NHS Library is an absolutely amazing resource and such a warm welcome from Julie. I urge anyone who hasn't visited yet to do so. So thank you so much. And thank you for all your work, Julie, on, on the library and running it so, so well. I know it's a, it's a lot of time. It's a big commitment and it is a fantastic resource. Um, somebody's just popped in. Do people need to let you know that they're coming? Can people just turn up now? Um, every Wednesday or the third Saturday, uh, is best if we don't know specifically. If you want to come, you need to make sure that someone's in the AMC to to let you in, preferably yeah. during the identification times. But if you let me know, it's probably best. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay, so if we go on to the next slide, it is just a uh, Going to be a little brief thing from me about the virtual natural history talks and then on to the next one after that we've got a uh, infographic i think yep okay so really just quickly and again um you know kind of won't go through this in detail just it's been another very successful year we've had 20 talks we've had um you know over 3600 people coming along to those talks We've got a, and then obviously a lot of people book on Eventbrite and a lot of those, if they don't actually manage to attend the live event, will come along to, we'll watch it later on YouTube. Average of 194 people attending each of the talks. We've had a lot of people subscribing to our YouTube channel and that's new people. So we already had um, quite a good number of, of subscribers. A very big number, over 18,000 uh, video views on the LNHS YouTube channel and uh, nearly, you know, nearly not far off 3,000 uh, hours watching of those YouTube um, chat of the YouTube videos. So what we're getting is we're getting a sort of like a double audience, people who come to the live events, but also those those that's a long standing resource that people can kind of look at at any time. So it's really look it's really wonderful to see this having built from you know something that we just didn't have at all in place a few years ago. 
uh, and we've got a lot of people following on to the uh, LMHS Eventbrite channel, such that as soon as I put a new um, event on, there's like people booking it straight away, even sometimes when it's nearly, nearly a year ahead. So thank you very much. Obviously, my, uh, most of you are pe people who are coming on to the virtual talks, and we're pleased that they've been so successful. And I think there's just on the next slide, uh, a brief preview of some of the things coming up. So these are some talks, I won't go through them all in detail, but we've got talks arranged already for the majority of 2023. So please do have a look, please do come along. Uh, you'll be most welcome. And again, they're open to everybody, members and non-members alike. Um, so some really fascinating talks. Um, and we've, we've, we've just been so lucky with our speakers. That's great. So if we go on to the next slide, I think that should be, we're handing over to ecology and entomology. So over to you, Kieran. Hi, uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Kieran and I chair the Ecology and Entomology section. Uh, on to the next slide, please, Anka. In Ecology and Entomology, we cover basically everything except birds, uh, botany, lichens, fungi and the like. So including mammals, um, reptiles, amphibians and all the invertebrates. Uh, just some highlights picked out from some of the recorder reports that were sent over to us for the AGM. It's no surprise to anybody that we start with earthworms. Uh, earthworms are my group, so they went right to the top of the slide. Um, we've got 439 new earthworm records uh, within the LNHS recording area, which for earthworms is very good. <laughs> uh, it's quite hard to get earthworm records, and a lot of them came through the work we've been doing with Elliot Newton in uh, from Kingston Council uh, in Kingston. So we've done a lot of surveying of the reserves there and thank you to all the volunteers that helped with that. Uh, spiders, we've had 132 spiders, spider species recorded in London and Middlesex during 2022, including an exotic jumping spider, but uh, we don't think it's established. We think it was probably an escapee. Uh, for true flies, 205 species recorded through the LNHS eye record activity, uh, including 60 species of hoverfly. Uh, I think the marmalade hoverfly is one of our most recorded, so it'd be good to see some more variations. So please do get out there over the next year and record your, your flies, including your hoverflies. Uh, for butterflies, uh, the recorder noted that counts for some species of butterfly appeared low during mid to late summer of 2022. That's very possibly due to part vegetation, but analysis is ongoing. Um, and our London Butterfly Atlas is progressing. So watch this space for more news on that in the near future. Uh, for Ordinat, which is dragonflies and damselflies, one thing I wanted to point out was that a single scarce blue-tailed damselfly was found on one day by a recorder at a private site in Hillingdon in a habitat typical for that species. It's probably the first record of this species for the London area. Um, and finally, ending with Hymenoptera, which is the bees, um, well, specifically the bees and wasps from our recorder, Tony Magic. He's reported that Lestica clipiata, pardon my uh, scientific name pronunciation there, uh, one male was found of that uh, in the grounds of Chiswick House, and that's our first accepted UK record of that species since 1853. So a tremendous find there, and a big thanks to Tony and Mick Massey for that record. Uh, so I'm going to say next slide and move hand over to Botany, which I think is George. Yeah. So over Thanks, to very you, George. Thanks very much, Kieran. So can you hear me? Yep, that's perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Um, the sorry, there's no pretty pictures on this slide like all the others. I must have been a, a bit deficient there. Um, but the flavour of the committee has changed a lot. Um, because um, Dave Bevan, who's been chairman for a long time, has had to step down after many years of very competent service, and I now chair the meetings. I'm, I, I, I'm, I said I just chair the meetings, but I've discovered that, that does expand into other things as well. But um, at the moment, I'm just chairing the meetings. Um, Andrew Planet is now the secretary, having taken over from uh, uh, from Sarah. Uh, Graham Brown, who is again very effective, very competent, and served for a long time. Um, I'm no longer the field meeting secretary. John Agar has taken over that uh, that post. Um, the 
indoor meeting secretary is vacant and we really need one. So if anyone out there wants to do it, um, do contact me or one of the other members of the Botany Committee and let me know. The role has changed quite a lot um, with the advent of Zoom and with the advent of... Um, I'm not telling you that. With the advent of the um, the uh, virtual talks, um, so um, there's a lot less to do, and it's a lot easier than it used to be. Um, but we do need somebody there, and well, at the moment we have no representative on the library committee. Um, we have new members on the on the central committee: Wendy, Wendy Knowles, Maureen Parry, who is also the representative on council, and Sarah Rockney. A young lady who works at Kew and attends um, quite a few meetings. Um, the field meetings program we started this year. We've had 26 meetings of various sorts with an average of 14 or so people for each meeting. Um, and I hope it continues in the future. OK, thank Thanks. you, Maria. Thank you very much, George. Uh, we're now going to go to the Hampstead Heath survey. Um, and I, that's, I think, yeah, Liz, are you OK to yes. speak to that? Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Liz Andrew. I'm the chair of the Hampstead Heath survey. Um, uh, maybe we could go on to that. Thank you. So um, just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody who's helped with all the things we've been doing on Hampstead Heath. Um, and that's particularly um, Heath Hands, the, the charity there, English Heritage, who run Kenwood and the City of London, who look after the rest of the Heath and everybody else um, who helps the LNHS and the section in particular make their activities possible. So uh, I'm, I've remained as chair when we had our AGM a few weeks ago. Uh, Jeff Varger is the secretary and Kat Duke is the representative to council. And last year's ordinary members were all voted back. That's Pete Mantle, John Eggington, Jeff Duckett, and Joe Maddox. And we added a new member, uh, Ben Gibb, Benjamin Gibb. So we're uh, welcome to Ben, and we're looking forward to, to his working with us on the Heath. Um, for survey work and public engagement, we had uh, 15 survey walks uh, after we started again in September and um, uh, they were attended by an average of about 12 people uh, per walk. And they covered everything from um, fungi, uh, spiders, uh, bees. Um, we didn't actually do anything on plants much last year uh, in, in terms of surveys, um, and, but we did dragonflies uh, and ferns um, subsequently. So uh, we had several, notable and new species that were recorded. So for spiders, we had a, a nationally scarce male, Salticus zebranius, which is a jumping spider. We had uh, a female Philodromus buxi, one of the running crab spiders, and a male uh, Trematocephalus cristatus, which is a nationally scarce monkey spider. So that was very exciting to have those three recorded during that year. Uh, we had a new uh, species of ant, Lassius emarginatus, which is common in South Europe, but first appeared in Britain and recorded in London in 2008. So that's now been um, become established on, on the heath and uh, uh, what appears to be uh, a trail to a nest uh, of these ants was found. And then, uh, the bryophytes, uh, we're always turning up new species of bryophyte on the heath. So it was very exciting to find Pelia endivi folia. Um, so we now have all three Pelia species uh, on, on, uh, on Hampstead Heath. Uh, one of them, well, Pelia and um, one of the other uh, Pelia species only in one uh, place each. And then we found Dicronella howei recently recognized in Britain, um, also on the heath and on an anthill, a very tiny Bryum species, Bryum violaceum. So um, what I can we move on to the next slide now? Because the other thing I want to talk about 
is this project that uh, Mike West uh, touched on, where uh, LNHS were very fortunate to get a, a grant to study the Millennial Flora uh, project again in a slightly different way. So just to fill you in on the background to that, um, the Millennial Flora project was carried out around about the turn of the, of the uh, uh, millennium by other members of the LNHS, and they mapped over 650 species of flowering plants and ferns that were growing on the heath and the places they were found. And that's just a map showing where uh, one of the uh, species was located from all the mapping. So what we're doing now is we're look, mapping again the key flora from the original project, but also including fungi and lichens. And this started in, in March. So uh, we would had done a little bit until June, but not very much yet, uh, but much more to report next year. So we're looking, we're surveying meadows and heath and woodland by national vegetation classification, which uh, will give a, um, uh, an idea of the type of, of um, uh, colonies and, and uh, plant communities that are, that are living there uh, in relation to other national ones elsewhere. And we're also about to start, um, but we haven't, didn't do anything about it uh, last year, um, the, looking at having a diary to look at the emergence of leaves and flowers in areas with different microclimates. So it, we collaborated with Heath Hands and um, with them we set up a, a laboratory at the, one of their bases called the Hive on the Heath and we started mapping the, the flora primarily and carried out um, four uh, NVC surveys on meadows and one in a woodland and uh, hoping to get all of this, uh, these preliminary results uh, into a, a report to be submitted to City of London in the next uh, three months. So uh, thank you very much, Maria, and, and that, that's the end of, of my um, quick report. Thank you very much. Thanks again for all the work you're doing there. Now, I'm conscious it is already 7.30 just after, so I'm gonna zip through um, the final two, couple of sections. We've basically just got a couple more section reports and then we're finished. So um, I, I, I know you're, we don't want to kind of like keep David Wilkinson waiting too long. So um, just quickly on Book and Commons survey, the regular meetings there on us, the third Saturdays have resumed and there are some regular attendees, mainly local people. Um, and the Life on the Edge project that's funded by Natural England and the Friends of Book and Commons continues to have a positive impact. And if we just go on to the next slide. One of the really important things is that we need people who can visit that site regularly to carry out survey work and we need a committee established there. We'll also need somebody to take over responsibility for opening the hut soon as well. So we're desperately in need of volunteers for that particular part of our work. The National Trust Ranger Ian Swinney continues to play an active role in the management of the site and we're really pleased with the collaboration between the two organisations. He agreed to show an LNHS group around the site in July 2022. That was a really excellent day which I managed to attend. It was both enjoyable and informative and sort of re-established the connections between the society which was great. Uh, in August 2022 which is slightly outside the um, time for the reporting but so it's never mind a joint meeting with the British Plant Gall Society looked at plant galls and that was led by our reporter Tommy Root and Brian Spooner and there'll be another session a uh, similar session next year we do plan to hold at least a couple of focus sessions in 2023 but this survey is desperately in need of a group of dedicated members to move it forward so please do get in touch if it's a site that's local to you where you'd like to continue the long-standing survey work there and just something else that we didn't manage to get as far forward as I would have liked there's a the, with plans to publish the records of the Beatles of Book and Commons so that's something that needs to be revisited in 2023. And I'm going to pass over now to the final report um, from the London Bird Club. So over to you, Cecilia. Hi, everyone. Um, so for those who I haven't met yet, I'm the new secretary for London Bird Club. Um, I'll also just whiz through this quickly because I know we're short on time. So um, in terms of news this year, the bird walks have been a very strong feature for our activities. Um, and we've now published the bookmark checklist. We're continuing to cross market with the Marlebone Bird Watching Society and the Central London Local Group. Um, we've been making an effort to publicise our field, event, field events on our Twitter and Instagram accounts using the hashtag LondonBirds. There are currently no plans to resume the indoor talks at Berg House, 
Um, our reading circle remains active and is reading several journals. Um, in terms of finances, the income and expenses remain modest and stable. And uh, next sli slide, please. Um, just to go over our walks in a bit more detail, they resumed in September 2021 with new programmes and new locations. So thank you to all the walk leaders who have helped out with that. Um, the average attendance is about nine people, but that's gradually increasing. And the average number of species seen on a walk is 40. Next slide, please. Thank you. So our publication, the London Bird Report, um, the issue of 2020 was published as planned at the end of May 2022. Um, thank you to everyone involved. Our packaging is now sturdier, so we've received no more complaints regarding that. And we're aiming to publish the 2021 issue by the end of May 23. And submissions of papers are very welcome. The role of chair at the London Bird Report editorial board is vacant. So if you're interested in helping with any aspect of production, please email that address given at the bottom of the slide. Next slide. Um, and then just quickly, the London Bird Report are also looking to take out about 10 more writers. Um, so this could be a chance to sharpen your skills as a birder and as a writer and would give you a sightable piece of work in the London Bird Report. So you can find more details about that on the LNHS website. And that's everything from me.